Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. In this video, I want to take a look at the Bloxy theme. The Elementor 360 website has been around now for two years and it was time for a refresh. I was thinking about trying out a different theme. A lot of my online friends have recommended I try out the Bloxy theme. I purchased it when the Pro version was first released and I recently switched the Elementor 360 website over to Bloxy. So in this video, I'm going to give an overview of the theme and an overview of the steps I took to switch themes and share my overall impressions about Bloxy. The free version of theme is available in the WordPress theme directory. As you can see, it has more than 20,000 active installs, a perfect 485 five-star reviews, if we look at the downloads per day, we see that activity is increasing. And if we check the support forum, we see that the Bloxy team has been very active in helping users and answering user questions. The pro version of the theme is available from the Bloxy website. The URL is actually creativethemes.com. And if we look quickly at the pricing, you can see that it's available in annual or lifetime pricing for one site, five sites, or unlimited sites. If we go onto the Elementor 360 website and go back into the dashboard, Bloxy adds a high-level menu here. Usually themes put their dashboard under the appearances menu, but Bloxy has it here. If we look at this first page, we see there are several tabs. On this first home tab, basically shortcuts into the customizer. There are 10 starter sites and you can import them from here inside the admin. And if we look at extensions, there are a number of free extensions like a cookies consent, a newsletter subscribe extension, product reviews, trending posts, and theme widgets. If we look at the Pro extensions, there are actually three of them related to fonts. There's Adobe Typekit, custom fonts to upload your own fonts, or you can use local Google fonts for performance. You can store the fonts on your site. You can add JavaScript or CSS to the header or footer with this custom code snippets. There's an advanced menu, which allows you to create a mega menu or add icons into the menu. There's a shortcut bar, which I'll look at briefly. This is new, kind of cool. It's like a button bar sticky on the bottom of your page. You can have multiple sidebars and often people use a separate plugin for that, but it's part of Bloxy Pro. You can white label or there are WooCommerce extras. These are partner plugins that they recommend and the change log. In addition to these Pro extensions, one other thing that comes with Pro is you get the option to create these content blocks. And we'll look at that in a few minutes. But basically, these are bits of content that you can use theme hooks to place them in various pages or locations in the site. I'd say, though, that most of the action with Bloxy is in the theme customizer. And just kind of from a high level here, it's divided into three parts, general options, post types, and core. So I really like the way this is organized. Under general options, we have some things here. I just wanna show you a couple of these now. A lot of these are things that you're kind of used to seeing, but one thing that we'll look at is when I was talking about the process I go through to change a theme, for a live site, what I do is I copy everything over to a development site and do all the customizer settings. And then you see here is an option to export the customizer settings and import them then on another site. And so, you know, it might take me an hour or something to go through all the customizer options, but this way I can kind of do it all in one go and there's no disruption for people on the site. We'll take a look at some of these different areas in a minute, but also under general, there's a header builder, which is pretty cool. There's a footer builder, sidebar options, color options, topography, and performance. And then another kind of cool thing is in this post types section, 
you can customize the single blog post or the archive or the categories archive. And you can do that for every post type. Here, you know, I can do it for pages. I have a newsletter post type and I can do it for the newsletter archive and single. And we'll look at this briefly also. Same for news. So that's kind of cool. And then these things here under core, these are your standard customizer options like, you know, site identity, menus, widgets, homepage settings, additional CSS that are in most modern themes. So that's kind of the overview of the customizer and the different features. And as I said, we'll look at those in a few minutes. So one thing I wanted to show you on the finished site before we look at my process is that Bloxy has a truly global color palette. I've set my theme colors, brand colors here in the customizer. And if we go into a post and we edit it in Gutenberg, here's the color palette here as well. So you see the palette from the customizer carries over into Gutenberg. And I actually just recently did in preparation for updating the site, I tested a bunch of themes and there are only three that actually have a global color palette like this. There's Cadence, Neve, and Bloxy. And I was surprised that some of the other ones don't even bring the customizer color settings into Gutenberg. So that was kind of a surprise for me. But there's the color palette in Gutenberg. Let's go look at a page in Elementor. So I just want to kind of show you this. Here's the Elementor global palette. You see these four are the Elementor default colors. But then Bloxy has carried over, you can see the customizer palette here as well and added those to the global colors of Elementor. And these colors are linked. If you go to the customizer and say change this orange to a different color, anywhere you've used that color, it will carry over. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. This is a local development site. And what I did first is I took a backup of the Elementor 360 website and brought it down and installed it on this local site. And then I installed and enabled Bloxy. You know, I have been using the Page Builder framework, but I installed enabled Bloxy and I installed the Bloxy Companion plugin, the premium version, the pro version. Okay, so. And also you can see like disabled some of the other, like I won't need central color palette now because Bloxy has the global color palette built in. But anyway, I've disabled some of the security plugins and stuff on the development site. So when you look at one of these general purpose themes for the first time, most of them are very vanilla. You can see this is the blank Bloxy after just, you know, activating it without going into the customizer at all yet. So the steps I took here were basically, I did all of the customizer changes at one time, and then I used that export functionality and on the live site, I then imported those. So the first step is I came in and I set the brand colors. So let me do that. Okay, so I copied these colors in. I've been using the central color palette, so I grabbed them from that before deactivating it. And you can see there are these different kind of positions, and some of them are reflected here. But there's documentation here, and this is kind of the cheat card that shows you how each color is used in the theme. So that was kind of the first step. And then I went into the header builder, and this header builder is pretty cool. There are a few themes that have one, you know, Cadence, Bloxy, and Neve. And the way they work is if there's nothing in the row, then it doesn't show. So if I want this row to show, for instance, then I might add the menu to it. And you see there are three drop zones, left, middle, right. And then you can click on the element to go into its settings. So I'll give it the menu I've already just find. And then you have some kind of general options. This gives you a hover color. It's a little bit hard to see. This one gives you an underline. If you hover over it, this kind of gives you a different color background. And this gives you a line above and below. So underline, I don't know if you can see that. Hover. 
and then above and below. All right, so I think I went for this one and you can adjust how high this is. And then if you go into the design, you can change the colors. I'm gonna actually make the font color the light blue and then on hover, make it the darker color and the active indicator i'm going to make this color here so i think if i did that right that looks okay and so that's kind of the colors for that now on this header builder you saw i'm working now on this element if you want to customize the entire row then you can just click on the row to do it and you get different customizer options so here it's set for 50 pixels high i might make it say 40 and we can go and set the background color. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. Now, I usually have a login, logout menu item, and I've been using a plugin for that, but Bloxy has an account element, so I'll add that. And on the account element, this is the logged in options. These are the logged out options. So you can choose what happens when you're logged in. I want it to go to log out. And you have the option to show an avatar, an icon, or none. And icon size. And then if you want to have a label instead of the, or in addition to the image or the avatar, then you can do that here, enable that. And then for the design of this, I think I want the icon color to be that. And I don't know, when you hover over it, we'll try that. Okay, so let's see that. All right, anyway, and then for the logged out and going to the general, we want to go to a modal. And for design, we'd want those to be the same. Okay, so, so there is that. Now we can select the menu here for this one. And if we want to give it a little more spacing, we can do that. And again, I'll do it like this and make the, the height of that like about 65 or something. And if we look at the design, and then I think I want the font size to be a little larger. And I think we could leave the like that leave the hover color then for the logo select the image and let's see turn off site title maybe make it 60 tall and then for this row click on the whole row and i think it doesn't need to be quite that tall and we can give it a background color of this kind of light gray and then in the design, let's give it border there, bottom border, make it full width. Okay, so that's kind of the header and you get an idea how the header builder works. One thing to show you though, before we leave here, is we're doing the desktop header. You can click here for the mobile header and that's what the menu looks like. By default, you see it doesn't use the same menu. You can have a different mobile menu. So let's go here now and pick the menu we want for that. And let's pick the background color that we would like. So now let's look at it. So I guess that's a little nicer or we could make this one of these purple colors. So anyway, there's kind of the mobile menu and how you do that. So I found that it's kind of a good idea to save as you move through different sections. So let's see, we looked at account and there are options for like a call to action button, contacts, a divider, HTML, you know, three menu options, search, search box, social links, trigger. I think that's for if you're using a mobile menu and a widget area. Okay, so that's the header builder. The footer builder is very similar, although of course you're doing the footer. It also has three rows potentially. If you don't put something in the row, then it doesn't show. So I would go to the row 
and in design we would click the background let's use that gray so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab the copyright text from the other site but what i found was that I want to put it into this text version of the editor because I have HTML and links and I have classes like footer separator. So I use the text here to paste it in so I don't lose that. And let's just adjust this a little bit. Okay, I'm going to publish that and now we can see it. So that's the footer builder. You can put, you know, menus and widget areas and things in here if you want to use those. Okay, so let's look actually at the sidebar. Now, this is a page, and so I think what we need to do is go into pages. You see they have four options, kind of pre-designed options. And I want the sidebar on the right. And on pages, I don't want comments. So I'll turn that off for pages. Okay, so let's go and do the background color for the sidebar. So that looks pretty good, I guess. This is the page title. We do that on a page by page basis because some pages I want to have a title and others not. So that's kind of pages. And we've got several pages, so let's see how those look. Here's the Contact Us page. Then we can look at, these are category archives, tutorials and reviews, those are categories. So let's go to Post Type Categories. And I want there to be a sidebar. If we look at the card options, I'd like to have two cards, have the featured image on top. And the title and the post meta we can have a read more button and this is the wrong aspect ratio you see you have this little down arrow here okay so that looks better and then there we go so we'll save that and then we'll go this is a post type archive here same kind of thing we'll go to the post type of newsletters and we'll have a sidebar and we'll customize the cards featured image title post meta read more give the read more an arrow button okay and then adjust the featured image so publish that. Now let's go look in one of the individual newsletter posts. You can see that needs help. So let's go and do newsletter single. I'd like to have the sidebar. And I want to show the featured image. And original ratio, so that's good. Now, an interesting thing is they have a share box here. So I'll toggle that on. And you can have that show at the top or bottom. So I think I'd like it at the top. Can we see that? Yeah, there it is. Good. So I'll turn off the bottom. And then you have the choice of this kind of bar-like or separate buttons. I guess I'll go for the bar. And then you have different social networks that you can enable. Okay, so that's the single newsletter. Okay, so that's this process. Okay, so there are just a few more things I want to show you. I'm here on a single post and I'd like to add the share buttons and a table of contents here. And then at the bottom, here, I'd like to add an accordion with affiliate disclosure. Put these at the bottom. So let's go and do that. So one thing I wanted to move or have the share buttons up here. So we can do that in the customizer. Let's go into the customizer here on single posts. We'll have this share box turned on. Let's put it at the top instead of the bottom. Okay, so that's done. 
Now for the table of contents, an easy way to find the right hook and placement for these content elements is to click and then you see these are all the places where there are hooks. And this is the one here where we want to add the table of contents right here. And so click on the edit button and that takes us into this content blocks area. I'm just going to change the name here to be single post TOC and I'll update that. I've got the classic editor plugin installed here and that lets you switch between the block editor and the classic editor. So I, I need the block editor here. Okay, I'm gonna add the table of contents and we'll go to the title sections. We'll make this font a little bigger, say 45 pixels. We need to go into the Bloxy settings up here and you see it already has the hook location filled in. See, there are all these hook locations. But now we want to add the display conditions. So we want it to show on post single. And you can see there are a lot of possible conditions that you can choose from. And you can also have an expiration date, have it stop showing at a certain date and time. Okay, so now let's update this. And let's go back now to our single post. And here's the table of contents. Looks like I need to do a little styling on that. I don't want the bullets. And okay, there's the table of contents. So that looks pretty good. Now let's do the same thing for the affiliate disclosure at the bottom. Let's show hooks. Go to the bottom here and we'll edit this one. Post single. Okay, save that. Let me switch to the block editor. Okay, and now we'll do the accordion, the cadence blocks accordion. There's several kind of default styles here. Let's try this one and we'll add title. Okay, and then Select our icon and okay. Then our content, we'll make that size, I think maybe 14 pixels. Okay, we don't need a second one. And start with all panes closed. And let's make this 16 pixels. Okay, and let's change this top and bottom padding a bit. We have the location, let's set the display condition. We want it on post single. Okay, so we'll update. And now let's go take a look at a post. Okay, there's the affiliate disclosure. All right, so that was pretty easy to add. So one thing here is we've done the customizer things. I've shown you how to do the content blocks. Here, because I want the title on some pages and not others, we would have to go individually page by page where I want to turn it off. So, so I would just disable it. For example, Last thing I wanted to show you is there is a new feature. And if we go into the pro extensions, there's this thing called a shortcuts bar. Okay. And so I'm not quite sure how I would use this yet, but when you enable that, then this shows an option in the customizer under extensions and you have kind of a full across style or you can have like a bar this is kind of like a floating footer bar or something and you can add then different elements there i need to go into the design let's make the bar a little darker 
So I don't know if you like that or not, but if you wanted to have some kind of calls to action or maybe you have a membership site or something where you want people to be able to get to a page or a section quickly, then you could use this. You can adjust the visibility by device and there are display conditions. So you can have it show on different pages or areas. So you could also have it show by user role. So that might be more useful for like a membership site or something. So that's the shortcuts bar. Now for some discussion and conclusions. Switching themes on an existing site can be a bit nerve wracking. You want to minimize disruption as much as possible. By making the customizer changes on a clone site first, I was able to import them to the live site quickly through the Bloxy customizer import. The other things were mostly page by page changes. In general, everything went smoothly. Of course, after the customizer import and other quick changes, I checked over the site carefully in case there were tweaks that needed to be made. There are several things that, like Bloxy, have a lot of customizer options. I found the Bloxy customizer settings to be very logically laid out with the general post types and core sections. In fact, I think this was the best organized of any of them I've tried. Pretty much any layout and style option I needed was available. I like the fact that you had a lot of control for customizing the different post types, both single and archive options. This is useful if, for example, the featured image of each post type are different sizes. The Bloxy content blocks are very powerful. As you saw, it was easy to create and place the table of contents and affiliate accordion to customize a single post template for my site needs. I imagine this type of functionality will become even more robust when WordPress adds more blocks for full site editing. If you remember back to the beginning when I discussed the reasons for trying out Bloxy, they were because friends were very happy with the theme and shared their good experiences. Also, the theme developers are engaging users, paying attention to feedback, and then adding things users need. This kind of behavior turns users into fans and ambassadors. Bloxy is obviously doing a lot of things right. So that's my look at the Bloxy theme. There's a text version available on the Elementor 360 website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.